What is up? Um... What would my video... You know, everybody's got an intro on their videos, right? And, you know, what would my videos be if I didn't start it out with, um... Um... I used to know this guy. And he actually said, um, in such a fashion that you would actually think less of his intelligence after he did it. And it'd be a pause. He was using it as a word whisker in conversation. But the way that he said, um, it... It had such a monotone to it that you'd, you'd swear that his brain just like flat, fucking flatlined or something. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So I have this friend who has need, I believe, he didn't ask directly for it, but he has some need of long-term motorcycle storage tips. And, uh, ooh, look, I switched up the um for an ah. <laughs> first things first. I think uh, battery tenders are very popular with uh, the motorcycle crowd. You know, you basically have a little 12 volt Tyco connector coming off your battery and a little plug it into the wall thing. But in the long run, though, I don't feel so good about that because you figure like thunderstorms and things like that, you know, you would want to eat up your $110 Harley Davidson battery tender little charger box. But if you did, if you did plug that into, say, a real good quality surge suppressor, like what you would use for a computer, I mean a really good one, it's, it'd be worth the money. They have them. Um, I don't know, I could do a search if, if the mystery person in question is real interested in, in hearing about that. But I don't see that as really the greatest uh, solution for what it is that you're trying to do. If your motorcycle has to sit for three months, I don't think your answer is in for energy storage for starting. I don't think your answer lies with a wet cell traditional lead acid battery. Because the way that these batteries are constructed now, where they used to have, say, a solid lead plate on the one side, well, now what you have is basically a, a, paper, a system of sheets of paper with a lead grid painted on them. And the electrons either stick to the grid or they're suspended in the acid, you know what I'm saying? And more or less, whenever you have it charged up, you want it to, say, be suspended in the acid, and then the grid draws it, or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, but I'm sure, by nature, you can see what the problem is with that setup. You end up with it uh, oxidizing. My recommendation for energy storage and retrieval would be for an AGM battery, which uses a glass mat for the transfer of electrons and uh, some kind of mystical gel. <laughs> anyway, find an AGM that fits in your in your motorcycle. Now it's going to cost twice as much as what your your lead acid one will, but in the long run, and its uh, resistance to sulfation will be more than worth it. And especially you get home and you be able to crank it and, you know, get what you need to do. Now, as far as cranking it goes, um, when you do crank an engine that has been sitting for a very long time, they have a nasty habit of the oil draining to the bottom. I don't know what, what type of oil you use already. I would recommend a combination. I want, because it sits for so long, I'm going to have to recommend that you go with some sort of an oil stabilizer. Uh, I really like a Lucas Oil because it just sort of adds this gooiness that will keep keep the top of your engine juicy when you go to crank it up. You know, that way your cam lobes and shit like that ain't rolling over the, the lifters and the push rods dry. So run Mobile One, I think, in whatever viscosity they recommend, and then put just the right amount of, of Prolong substituted in there, and I think you'd have a real good cocktail of making your motorcycle do what you want to do. The other thing would be, uh, and I don't know if you have it, have it yet, is put that bitch on a lift to where your tires are up off the ground so that you don't have any flat spots and shit like that. I've been wanting to tell you about this stuff for a while, and it just has been one of those things that hasn't really come up. Um, you'll still probably want to have a tender even on that AGM battery because you can measure this on a... No matter what you do, you are going to get some loss 
and transfer of electricity between the two prongs of the battery even if the battery is clean which you're going to want to make sure the top of your battery is clean because I could actually show you with a voltmeter how electrons are traveling across the top of a dirty battery my dad showed me that pretty neat little pretty neat little doodad that's dad doodad all right anyway I'm gonna chuck this up there and uh and you're gonna mystery man you're gonna owe me for this and I'll uh Everybody else is going to just have to fucking wonder, except for a few people. They'll find out, but uh, I'll put up uh, on the other thing, the other thing, what, what, I, what I need out of you for this little bit of information. Now, if you did, if you do already do all this shit, then let me know on the other thing, or if you need something clarified, please feel free, but I want to, uh, I want to make it to where you're able to enjoy your shit. And it's not so easy these days because stuff is made so crappily, you know what I'm saying? And your choice for equipment is kind of shitty too. Like I got a, I got a fucking, I got a 50cc Honda dirt bike that I used to ride when I was 10 years old or whatever. <laughs> and I could actually run over to my parents' place and, and fire that bitch up in like two shakes of a fucking lamb's tail. But, all right. <laughs> Rod Red, motherfucker. <laughs> we'll be seeing y'all. Y'all take care.